All right, church, I'm in an ongoing series called Overcome Evil with Good. It is based on the Bible, Romans 12, verse 21. It says, do not be overcome by evil, but instead overcome evil with good. We spent the first half of this series talking about don't be overcome by evil. And the second half is overcome evil with good. That's the fun part. The don't be overcome part is... That's that that most people like feel like that's hard enough and they stop there. I'm just I, I resisted temptation today. Great, good for me. Uh, and the, as though that's the whole what the whole Bible says, and that's the whole total amount of Christianity that you have is just don't do bad stuff. And that's yeah, it's important. Don't participate in it. Don't let it get its grip on you in any way. It's extremely important, but it's only the first half. The second half is the fun part. That's where you win. That's where you overcome evil with good. If you stop at the first one, then your your life is just a, a series of things you're trying not to do, um, despite your temptations to do them. Uh, the, it's just it's a miserable way to live to just just look at, at Christianity as though it's I'm empowered to not sin. Great, you got way more power than that though. You got the power of the Holy Spirit. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Jesus says. Therefore, you go make disciples of all the nations baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you, and I am with you to the end of the age. That's what Jesus said. you got the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead now dwells in you, according to Romans 8. Read the book of Acts. These guys didn't just, uh, didn't just resist temptation. They went out there and changed the world. Okay, uh, Salt that loses its saltiness is bland. Light that sits under a basket in a corner does not illuminate the room. And Jesus says, you're not to be like that. You're supposed to illuminate the room. You're supposed to flavor the whole place, the earth. So overcome evil with good. And we've looked at that in a few of these sessions, talking about, I I just called it reforming things from within. You're in the system. You're in the big company that wants to fire a bunch of people. You're in the school district through, uh, you know, somehow in the community. Um, Reform it from within. Run for the school board. I uh, work together with your coworkers at the company to uh, petition the um, the HR department or whatever. Uh, I we looked at filing lawsuits and, and and winning lawsuits, and these are are righteous, good ways to use the justice system and to love your neighbor and stand together with your coworkers and everything else. Um, but I want to look at it today and and probably for a few different sessions on the other way, the the flip side of it which is get out of the system and build a new one. I preached on this Sunday. I called it Come Out of Babylon. It was out of Revelations 18 and uh, at Jeremiah 51 is the first place the Bible says it. Come out of Babylon. Come out of her. And then Revelation 18 repeats that in, in quotes from Jeremiah. Come out of her, lest you participate in her iniquities and her plagues. Come out. So, do you think the system that you're in, maybe it's the public education system, the government education system, uh, maybe it's maybe it's a business that's tied in somehow to Babylon, to, to Caesar, you have to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and your whole lifestyle belongs to him because you're dependent on him, uh, then you're, you're suckered in. Um, what about getting out of the system altogether and starting a new one? That's what we'll look at today. All right. So a few things. One, find the ways that you are in the system. And once you find the ways that you're in, find any leverage the system is using against you that Caesar and Babylon are using against you and get out. You got to identify them first. Debt is one of them. Debt. A lot of people think of Caesar and Babylon and these things as the government. And debt is oftentimes not the government. It's oftentimes a private company, a credit card banking company of some sort. Get out of debt. I don't care if it's a government or a bank. If, if you owe them something, then you have to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. If Caesar's a bank or if Caesar's a governor or somebody else and you owe them something, then you're going to have to pay up. And that's going to leave you a lot less to give to God what belongs to God because you, your whole life you gave away your life for a little bit of money to Visa, credit cards or something, and now you're indebted to them and you don't have anything left to give to God because you signed your life away to something else. If you're dependent on the government for your health care, your welfare, your education, uh, your retirement, your whatever, those things are leverage. 
that the government will use against you eventually, or the banks or whoever you, you know, you're relying upon can use against you, and we are seeing right now will. These companies that, that get government contracts are now being pressured by the government. If you want your contract, you're going to have to fire a bunch of these employees who didn't do anything wrong, and those employees weren't even – you You just worked for the company. You didn't even know you were working for the government or that the government had leverage on you. Now they do. So you might want to just get out. The same with the government schools. I call them government schools. I do not call them public schools. Most people call them public schools. But look, if they directly ignore the public and obey the government, they're a government school. They're not a public school. A public school would has a school board election, and the school board is accountable to the public. We have the school board elections and the public votes, but then the school board winds up just obeying whatever the government says because the government has 100 pounds of leverage on them and they got nothing uh, the, the government just just lever, um, uses whatever leverage it has. It, it, it puts out bait, says you know, all your teacher certifications come through us and we'll pull them. If you, we'll pull your certifications if you don't do what we say. You get funding for your new buildings and your gigantic football stadiums, lights and artificial turf as though we're some sort of professional squad around here or something. Um, and it's leverage. It's bait with a hook in it. And... Um, they're, they're not accountable to the public. They're accountable to the government. The general public, generally speaking, believes in God. The government doesn't. The government says you're not even allowed to pray in your school if you work for us. Even if you're a believer. Even if you live an American citizen and a believer and you have total freedom of religion according to our Bill of Rights. The government says you don't have freedom of religion if you have a classroom. You're not allowed to pray to that class. You're not allowed to do that. You are not allowed to teach them that they were created in God's image. You are not allowed to teach them that God anything about God at all. Uh, they're a government school. They obey the government. They do not obey God, and they do not listen to the general public, unless unless the general public happens to agree with the government, and then they go with it. They're a government school. If you're in that system, come out, come out of the system. If if you if you are in it and you think you can reform it, by all means, go for it. But get on your knees and pray to the Lord and seek God and say, God, how in the world are we going to reform an, an education system? that doesn't even believe you exist. Education, the beginning of education, is the fear of God. That's according to the Bible. Um, <clears throat> and they don't have the fear of God at all. They deny God altogether. They just pretend he doesn't exist. And they go around teaching education as though he's not there. They don't even have the beginning point of education. So if you want to work in that system to reform it, hey, more power to you. I know a lot of believers doing that. I know a lot of believers running for school board this year. We got a school board member in our church who's been trying to reform the system uh, for years now. Um, not a Bermudian, um, but in one of the other ones around here. Um, it's, it's doable. There, if, you, if God has made you to be a person to, to fix the system from within, do it, do it well, and don't quit. But if you are not cut out for that, or you're in over your head, or you simply believe God says, you know, you, you need to come out of this now, then come on out and help us start a new system. For the schools, it's, it, it, what, what, does a, what does a system look like to build a new one? It would look like a private Christian school or a Christian homeschooling curriculum, hopefully tied with a network of others. Our church does both. We have children in our church and youth in our church who go to private Christian schools, and we have families that do Christian homeschooling. I don't think either one is better or worse, uh, but I think they are infinitely better than the government schools. Um, and, I, and I really mean that because the government schools deny God and the Christian schools and the Christian homeschools start with God and God is infinite. So coming out of the government school, you have infinitely upgraded your child's education. I deeply believe that. Like I said, if you can work in that system to fix it, that would be a great ally to make. If we could fix that government school system, Praise the Lord. If you know how to do that and you're in a position to do it, do it. Uh, let's, let's, let's make it happen. All right. But build your own system. It's hard to come out of the system. On Sunday, I made an allegory to, to jail. People who come out of prison after being there for a while have a very hard time getting used to what we call the real world. Because the real world is harder in certain ways than prison. Way harder. In prison, if you don't get along with somebody, they just move you. They don't care. They don't teach you any skills of how to get along better. 
You don't like your neighbor and you get in fights, they just separate you, like toddlers. Uh, in prison, you don't really have to work for your food. They're going to feed you. In prison, they tell you when to wake up, and you do. what You might not like what time they tell you to, but you're on a schedule that they give you. You go where they say to go. You eat what they give you to eat. Your life is pre-planned. And the people on the outside kind of miss you, and so um, it's a good feeling to be missed. And then when you go outside and you have to get your own job and you have to get along with all these people, all of a sudden it gets really hard. Coming out of the government school system is the same thing. Same thing. Coming off of welfare is the same thing. We have people here, and it's, it's been a little while, but I, we, I, I, I used to meet up with a guy consistently who was on welfare, and he was healthy and could work. But for whatever reason, he, he was, I don't, I don't, I get, I get these confused. He, he, he claimed a disability and was getting away with it. He was not disabled in any sense of the word that I'm aware of. Um, he was able-bodied. He would show up at our church to do hands-on hard work, and he would do a fine job. But he just didn't, he didn't like getting up on time to work. And so then he would say, well, if I get a full-time job, I'll lose my welfare benefits because welfare is based on my income staying at a certain level. If I ever go a dollar over that, all of a sudden I'm not eligible for this anymore. And so he would play the system and he would work, uh, you know, 24 hours a week instead of 25 or whatever the cutoff number was. Um, he would he would only take jobs that paid a certain amount. If they paid a, a ten cents extra, he actually wouldn't take a raise because that would bump him out of some category. And he played the game. And then he would quit his job if if his total yearly income was it reached a certain dollar amount. He would just quit. He was just milking the system because it was hard for him to come out altogether from the system. So he would try to make the best of both worlds. The government education is the same way. It's the exact same way as prison. It's the exact same way as welfare. It's the exact same way as any of this. But, but if you if you knew a guy on welfare who was doing that, you would say you are a punk man. Straighten up, wise up, get some maturity, take responsibility for yourself, and start working. That's what you would say. That's what I used to say to him. He eventually stopped meeting with me. I didn't say it like that, but you know what I mean. I, I think I did say it like that at one occasion. Um, <clears throat> Not angry, just we built up a kind of a friendship where I could call him a punk and he wouldn't get offended. But he also didn't want to come back. Um, <clears throat> anyway, if you want to rebuild a new system, you're going to have to come out of the old one. And it's going to be hard, but it, you might need to do it anyway. Um, do it for the, the good of your children, the good of your family. And I'm talking about education, but think of it from your job perspective, too. Do you really want to work at a company that threatens to fire you over, over a personal decision that's between you and God and God alone? God owns your body, not the government and not your boss at all. They do not own your body. Even if you lived in a slave state and you were a slave, they do not own your body. God owns your body, and you're accountable to God for what you do, not them. So do you really want to work for a company that threatens your job and your coworkers' jobs? Do you really want to work there? I, I don't know. Maybe you do. Maybe it's the right job and you know God put you there for a reason. I'm not saying you need to get out. But look, you need to consider that. And if, if all the good employees that believe in I'm accountable to God, not my boss, um, if all the good employees that believe that leave, I bet those good employees could start a really good company and run that bullying, nasty, anti-God company straight out of business. All right, the company that threatens to fire all its good employees, and those good employees just, they're already skilled in, in that skill set. They already know how to do that job, and they have the beginning of knowledge and wisdom because they have the fear of God. Those guys, if they joined together, could make a better company that did the same product and the same service and do a better job of it and run that bad, nasty company straight out of business. And the same is true of schools. If all the good families leave schools, leave the government schools to start new networks, the government schools will be then will be left with only the families that, that believe in bullying and they will self-destruct and fall apart. And the sooner that ship sinks, the sooner the new ships can be built that float. The more you prop up a sinking ship and try to keep plugging, there's thousands of holes and you're trying to keep your, hold your thumbs in each one of them to keep it from sinking. The longer you do that, all you're doing is sustaining 
a sinking ship. It's going to sink, just a matter of whether it's going to sink in the next 10 minutes or if it's going to take 20 years to sink. But it's not getting anything done. It's not accomplishing anything in the meantime. Why would you keep propping it up? I don't know. Maybe there's hope. Maybe you're in the system and God put you there and you know you're there for a reason and there is a way, way through this and a way to fix it. If you've got that vision, you do it. If you do not have that vision, then get out. Get out and help us start a better one. All right. Um, we'll get into a little bit more details of that. But I, the, it's, it's some, of, some of the main ones, the two that our church is best at right now, one that we've over the past two years has been doing is giving away the groceries. Um, year and a half, whatever it's been. Um, we give away groceries. They, uh, they, they, there's no government funding in it at all. There is zero hooks in it. The only hook is we pray for you. And people come back and they constantly tell us, thank you for praying. We get prayers answered and they come back and tell us about it. We feed them groceries that are not from the government and they like it. And it's a blessing and it keeps food on the table for people who cannot keep up with inflation because um, Uncle Caesar and Babylon have been tinkering with our currency system for 100 years and now we have inflation. Um, and they're messing it up. So come out of the system, stop using the government system, uh, build your own, do not rely on the government to put food on your table. Come to church to do it. God is your provider, Jehovah Jireh, is one of the names of God. It means God the provider. And how is God going to provide? Through God's people, the people who have his likeness and his inscription written on us, and that's the church. So the church needs to get out of Babylon and start doing what Babylon does, only so much better that people come with us out of Babylon. If you want to enter God's kingdom, you're going to have to leave the kingdom of this world. Come out of her. Build a new one. Get the church doing it. Another way that we have just started doing it is the education system. We give away scholarships. We had a meeting last night. It went late in which we discussed how we can get more money into our families to get them out of the government school because you're hooked in there and it's hard to get out. There's no judgment on you that you're in it. We're going to help you find a way out if you want out uh, through scholarships. I also had a meeting this morning at um, the Adams County Christian Academy in which I talked to their uh, administrator and talked to her about this and said, you know, I'm going to want to get some, some clarity for how much tuition costs per student per year and give us a ballpark figure of what kind of scholarships we're going to need to do. We also have the homeschool co-op in our church, and so many people in our church have started homeschooling in the past couple of years. It's just getting connected. So we want to help you do that. Come out of Babylon and build a new system that fears God. Um, there's another system. Our church doesn't directly do it, but I know many in our church participate. It's these Christian um, health insurance co-ops where you, you it, they're only available to believers. They are not government sponsored. Um, MediShare and Samaritan's Ministries, I think, are two of the main ones um, that you pay in along with a bunch of other believers and you cover each other's medical expenses. What do you know? Where'd they get that idea from? They got that idea from the Bible, especially from the book of Acts, where we can take care of one another and be out of Babylon and not rely on the systems of Babylon, but build our own new ones. All right, that's some of the ways you can overcome evil with good by building good systems and letting the evil ones sink, let them burn to the ground. Because without, the, if the good people withdraw and build new systems, all the good people will start to follow, and the good people are what prop up the old system, the bad system. So if the good people leave the bad system, it will collapse, uh, and in its wake, the church can stand burning brightly in the center of the room uh, big bright light and everyone will say, whoa, that's the system I want to be in. Why in the world was I selling my soul to Caesar? Why in the world did I give away my whole life for uh, some debt, for some measly meal tickets and poor education that I didn't even, now that I'm out, why would I go back? All right. That's what this is about. God bless you. I'll talk to you a little bit more about building new systems, and this is something that we all need to be working on right now. I'll talk to you some more about tomorrow. God bless you.